In the last few videos, we've been talking about variation in speech. In this video, we'll return to the topic of prescriptivism and look at variation in writing. There are several sources of variation in writing. For example, you could have problems with your input system. If you're using a keyboard or you autocorrect, where your autocorrect makes the mistake of replacing what you're typing with some other thing. Um, these are mistakes. Much more interesting are the other two sources of variation. For example, your language probably doesn't have a one-to-one -one match between the writing system and the phonemes of the language. In English, for example, we have the velar stop k, k uh, which can be written, so we have the phoneme k, and it can be written with the letter c, the letter k, even the letter q in some words. So a word like calendar is written with the c form of this phoneme. But it's written with a C because of tradition, because this is the form we inherited from Latin. And so we just have to memorize that this phoneme is mapped to the letter C in this word and not in kilogram, for example. Likewise, in this final syllable, in calendar, but not calendar, notice that these two sound exactly the same. Calendar, calendar. The problem here is something that we studied in week three regarding phonology. In English, these are unstressed syllables, calendar, calendar. So because they're unstressed, their vowels are going to change and become schwas. So in reality, even if you have an a or an e in the syllable, it's always going to become a schwa, calendar. So there's no way to know what is the correct mapping of this sequence of sounds into the writing system. Is it calendar? Is it calendar? There's no way to know unless you memorize it, unless you spend the time going to school and sitting in front of books for years to memorize that calendar is written with this sequence of glyphs. These errors have the same problem. Interesting, knowledge, lollipop. They're perfectly legitimate ways to spell the words, but and because of the way the uh, phonology of English works, these spellings would be just fine. However, because of tradition, we have come to spell them with these forms. So you can have a mismatch between the phonology of your language and the writing system of your language. And it's going to make it difficult for speakers of the language to memorize how they should spell the words. Another source of variation is that you can have variation as an index of social identity. For example, you can write that you're going to be two, 10 minutes late, L8, instead of writing L-A-T-E. When you're doing this, you're probably not sending this to your professors uh, or in a formal letter. You're writing it to your friends. You're using it in an informal context. Remember how in speech we have formal contexts and informal contexts? For example, if you're giving a talk in a class, this would be very formal versus chatting with your friends. This would be informal. We have the same distinction in writing. We can have something like an essay that you're writing for a class, which would be very formal, but also maybe a text message that you're sending to your friend. This would be an informal setting. And in this setting, it would be appropriate and almost desirable to use these uh, covert prestige variants, the ones that are not standard, to communicate you know, intimacy or closeness to your friends. So writing does have the distinction between formal and informal settings, and it would make sense to have variation in style in between the two. However, this is not the way people think of writing. People think that writing should be in one form, and that's it, and that there is a, per a better way to write English, period. This, you'll remember from week one, is called prescriptivism. The idea that there's some form of the language which is independent from speakers, it's like floating in the ether, like a platonic solid, and this form of the language is better, and we should all be aiming towards it. Pre uh, precisely the idea of prescriptivism tells you that there's some people who basically speak better than others, which as we've studied throughout the, the quarter is simply not true. There's just different variants of languages. But writing is where this plays out uh, the most intensely because people have always insisted that there should be one way of writing and everyone should write the same way. And the question has been, 
who gets to decide how we write our languages. And different languages have uh, come up with different solutions. In English, for example, speakers pretty much monitor one another. And there are some speakers that claim to be the authorities, like writers and makers of dictionaries. And they claim to be the ones that can tell you how to write your language. Other languages have created academies of regulators. And they are people who also claim the right to tell you how to write your language. Um, this, is, this has been the case for Spanish and French, famously. Their uh, languages were a part of government. Whoever is in charge of education, the Department of Education, is the one that decides how the language should be written. This is the case in Japanese or Swedish, for example. Let's look at the first two. Look at this dude. He can't even write his own name. Take a moment to look at the name. Yep. So believe it or not, the concept of spelling mistake was not invented until the 1600s or 1700s. Before that, people wrote the language as best as they could because there was no standardized way of writing English. So William Shakespeare, yeah, he wrote his name in all sorts of different ways, and that's the way he wrote all his plays. First of all, therefore demonstrating that you don't need standardized spelling to write beautiful literature or to write your language. You could write it as it sounds. However, in the uh, late 1600s, 1700s, something very interesting started happening. People invented the idea of spelling mistakes, that somehow language was being corrupted in, you know, in the mouths of the common people, that we should save our language and save the better form of our language. People started uh, writing dictionaries of English in the hopes of preserving the better forms of English, writing style manuals for how to write English, uh, we call these language mavens, people who produce materials that, event, that want to tell you how you should be behaving linguistically. And this is, might be related to the emergence of the middle class in England, people who you know, were caught in a bind trying to you know, be upwardly mobile and imitate the speech patterns of the upper class. So the upper class had to find some way of gatekeeping for uh, to you know, keep the rabble from going up. And... Um, conforming to the way they wanted English to be spelt was a very effective way of gatekeeping. And to this day, it still is. Um, people have managed to ingrain into the speakers of English the ideology that there should be one way of writing it. And if do, you do not write it that way, somehow you are dumb or dirty, as it says in one of the memes, or... Um, yeah, there's, or that you're immoral. There's all sorts of associations that have been created between spelling variation and, again, immorality, hygiene, and so forth. And now people are policing each other because they've been sold on the idea that writing is this marvelous thing that only, you know, super educated and nice people know how to do properly. Again, to the point where we are all happy to police one another on this. With Romance languages, it has been a little bit worse. So the, the concept of spelling mistake in Europe was invented in France in the 1930s, 50s, and the Académie Française very famously was involved in this. Their mission was to clean the language of the filth it has caught in the mouth of the people or from the bad speech of ignorant courtiers. So you can see where they're coming from. Um, the French might have invented the poison, but the Royal Spanish Academy from Spain perfected it. Please take a minute to read uh, part of their mission statement. Please pause the video. Yep. Uh, to this day, their logo still has the cauldron where they're going to purge us all, for no metal can be purged of any impure blending without having been uh, previously liquefied. They, uh, let me give you just one example of how they mandate that all of us write Spanish. The Academy was founded in 1723, and before 1723, the correct way of writing the verb to exist was this one, without an H, with a V, which, as you'll see, is the same as you'll have it in French, in Italian, and very similar to the Romanian. So if you look at any older corpus, at any corpus of Spanish with older forms, you will see that this was the correct way to spell it. However, in 1723, someone thought that it would be cool if we all spelled the word like they did in Latin, habere. However, this H was now silent. It was doing nothing. 
So just because they thought the Latin form looked cool, now they doomed us to having to write this letter that is silent, makes no sound, and we all have to memorize. And people frequently make a mistake with it because it's silent. There's no way to know it's there. But the, the academy and uh, language mavens in Spanish ever since have been very successful in selling us the idea that you're smart if you spell right. And if, you're, if you do not spell the same way they spell, you need your thumbs, uh, you need your eyes thumbed out. They've managed to associate spelling mistakes with, for example, immorality or even with lack of hygiene, with bad breath. So the, the academy and uh, people who write Spanish police one another and try to make sure that everyone conforms to the one orthography that the academy thinks is best for all of us. But again, it makes little sense to have just like one standard. As you can see, you could, you could write languages without a standard and it would still work. And you could use the, the variation as a way to mark identity, which is what people actually do. It's not that they're immoral or dirty, as this would make them uh, seem. Um, spelling does not have a one-to-one -one match with phonology in most languages, and because of this, it is possible to have spelling variation. However, prescriptivist ideologies have always told us that if we did uh, things in one and the same way, then everything would be better, and they want to force spelling to be like that. And they have been very successful in creating the idea that if you deviate from that spelling, then somehow you are dumb, you are dirty, um, and so forth. <laughs>